Welcome on in, Pisces. Welcome to your 2022 annual reading. And I gotta clear the space. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling something off in the force. Y'all know I'm an Aquarius sun, but I got a Pisces stellium, so. We gotta clear the space because I'm really, you know, interested in this reading. I wanna know, I wanna know if there's any messages in here for me, hopefully they're good ones. <laughs> By the way, I got to remind y'all, watch um, your opposite sign, Virgo, because that might give you some insight. There's probably some mirroring going on, and that might help you to better understand these energies that are coming up. And I'm going to be talking about the astrological energies, okay? Uh, definitely the first part of this reading. And it's probably most going to resonate with Pisces rising, okay? But obviously, you know, you can watch your sun, moon rising. And if you're like, I don't know what my rising is, well, you know, go find out. There are free online natal charts where you can find out what your sun, moon, and rising signs are. And then watch all three. But when I get into the astrology, this is most specifically going to resonate with Pisces rising. Nevertheless, I'm, I'm totally here. I'm totally here with my moon and Venus and Jupiter and black moon Lilith all in Pisces. <laughs> so hopefully we get some good messages. And let me also remind you that nothing is as accurate as a private reading. So if you want to get one from me, I am running a special right now. Um, 60 minutes for a hundred dollars and i'll have a link below if you want to if you want to get one from me i'd be happy to help you all right so i'm going to be shuffling and we'll see what cards randomly come out um, as we are talking about um, various subjects we're going to talk about the main energies this year and for those of you who want to know specifically about relationships and romance you can click ahead to that. Um, there's also a section on career and money, and we'll close out with a section on health and healing. Well, let's start off with the main energies of this year, and I want to talk to you about how 2022, some are considering it the year of Pisces, and you know what's so super exciting is Jupiter in Pisces. Oh my gosh, so exciting, so looking forward to it. And my, my oldest daughter, who is a Pisces, we were both like, yay, you know, what good stuff is going to come in because, um, right, number one, that's your ruling, one of your ruling planets. And, you know, Jupiter is a very benefic planet. Now, I mean, I have to say in all fairness, it can also bring expansion to things that are not so positive. So we got to, you know, have kind of a measured approach to this. All right. But overall, I mean, if you haven't going through any hardships in life or harshness, I think that Jupiter and Pisces is going to help kind of smooth that out. And at least that's what I'm hoping and bring a lot of blessings to you. And yeah, it might look like the world is breaking down around you, right? Who can't relate to seeing that. But I think because of this energy, you're going to fare well. But maybe others won't. And I will also say that as a mutable sign, and I'm telling all the mutable signs of this, which are um, Virgo, Sagittarius, Pisces, and um well, Gemini is mutable, but I'm not doing Gemini because Gemini was not requested, okay? Um, I don't have demand for Gemini readings, so I'm not doing that. But anyway, those are the mutable signs that will probably be faring pretty well this year. Fixed signs not doing so well. Fixed signs being Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, all right? So you as a mutable sign, as a Pisces with a Jupiter and Pisces, my gosh, count your blessings because they're coming in. And not everybody is going to have all this benefic energy uh, coming into this year. So I would suggest that as you start the new year, set your intentions on January 1st, okay? And write them down. Claim them out loud. Because by April, you might very well be inspired to see how many of those intentions are being made manifest. I'm serious. Write it down. Put it up on a wall or someplace where you're going to see it. Set those intentions January 1st and put an expiration date. Well, I don't know if I want to say expiration date, but definitely like a reminder to check back in in April to see how many of those things have been made manifest. Okay. And if it's not made manifest, let me say this. I'm just saying intuitively. This is what I'm hearing. If it's not made manifest by April 
look at how is it in the works or if it's not even in the works is it because actually that's not in your best interest and do you need to look at this from another angle do you need to come at this from another angle because with this energy spirits working on your behalf spirits on your side even if it looks like why well, didn't get what i wanted well that was maybe for your best right all right so Where's your main focus this year going to be? I think it's going to be in the third and second house is where that north node is uh, going to be. So this is really going to highlight short distance trips, not so much long distance. It's also going to put a focus on increased communications, thinking, learning, very third house stuff, right? It's also going to be very uh, good for students, people who are engaged in some kind of skill development, or maybe it's just you're your doing a bit of fact finding, okay? Like, Ditch the fact checkers. You're going to be your own fact checker. Okay. You're going to decide. <laughs> You're going to decide for yourself. This is also a good energy for strengthening bonds with siblings, neighbors, people you interact with often, usually on the day to day. This is really opening up a time of discovery for you in your life. And it could make way for the release of some long-held beliefs or once-honored spiritual mentors, people you looked up to, after realizing that the facts no longer support those beliefs or you realize the facts no longer support you placing that person in such help, uh, high esteem. I'm hearing that some of you may have outgrown somebody or something. You're outgrowing something, okay? Um, and I think that you're letting go of some beliefs. Because the themes of truth are highlighted. And so um, in April, when the North Node goes into your second house, this could bring some financial pressures on you to release any dependency issues that you may have on other people's resources. They might not be able to help you as much as you need them to. That might be something that comes out of that time frame. And this may force you to look at the role that money and resources play in your relationships. It could result in some confrontations and conflicts, I gotta warn you. So be careful with excessive compulsive spending because if you engage in that, you're quickly gonna see those resources depleted in all likelihood. Make sure that you have prioritized your spending, tend to that first before you indulge in any kind of unnecessary spending. This is also going to be a really good time for you to purge any shadow aspects within yourself. Um, it's like a spiritual detox. <laughs> um, it's about purifying something within yourself that might appear through relationships, possibly through power struggles in relationships. Or it could be shadow aspects within others that in some way reveal what you need to release within yourself and your relationships. It could be during this time that you let go of some people in your life or deeply transform the way that you relate to others and shared resources. It's interesting because I just visited with my Pisces daughter over Christmas and we we're already talking about this. So I'm giving you a timeline of April, right? When this North Node goes into the second house. But you could already start right now in December of 2021 already be feeling these pressures. You can already feel it building, right? Like my uh, daughter just got the notice and her lease expires in March. And they already sent her a notice saying that they're going to raise the rent like $250. And she's like, oh my gosh. And we were shocked because I said, do you understand this was just, this was illegal uh, just a few years ago. The landlords must have all gotten together in her area where she's living and um, changed the laws. Because it used to be they could not do that sort of thing. They couldn't raise it more than $100 in a lease term. But now they're upping it. They're basically pricing her out of the market. And uh, she's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So, right, you might already see it coming in, in March. And you know that you're going to have to make a decision um, prior. Some of you don't see it coming. I'm warning you, all right? I mean, some of you are getting a heads up like she is. And you know, you're going to have to make a difficult decision about money because uh, people are trying to, um, especially with everything going on right now with the economy, like I just gave you an example of my daughter, but who knows where you're living, what level of inflation or increased cost of living um, you're dealing with, as many people are. And um, it just puts the squeeze on when the wages do not keep up 
they don't keep up with it. And again, if you're like a business owner, which I'll talk more about when we get into career and, and money, but if you're a business owner, um, there, there's this domino effect because your clients and your customers, um, they're dealing with the inflation and the increased cost of living and wages not keeping up. So they have less disposable income to put on your goods and services. So buggle up, all right? Um, I'm giving y'all a heads up because I could see this definitely setting in by April. Now, what's working out for you? Where's your good luck this year? It's going to be in your first house till May. Having to do with yourself, your reputation, your image, your maybe in your body. Okay, that's first house stuff. And then again, um, you know, you'll have that energy in December of 2022. But between May and October, Jupiter is going to be in your second house having to do with money. So I'm going to say, yes, even though there are these financial pressures that I mentioned in April, with the North Node um, in that second house, it is very possible that you uh, you pivot in a way, uh, or you get some opportunity that blesses you. Uh, maybe you decide, you know what, I'm going to take my power back, and I'm not going to give these people the increased rent. I'm going to go someplace to bring my cost of living down so that I have more money, more options, more resources, or I'm going to... Um, house share, you know, do something to um, maintain leverage and not, you know, just be struggling this year. Um, I mean, I want to tell you that you're going to hit the jackpot lottery <laughs> with Jupiter in your second house. And then I could claim that for myself with all my Pisces placements. But realistically speaking, okay, for the majority of us, um, it's just probably going to bring in a ton of renewed confidence and increased faith. And yeah, in some way that's impacting your finances through some new opportunities or some easy breaks. I can't tell you you're gonna win the lottery though. I don't see that. <laughs> Who knows if some cards fly out, maybe maybe we'll get a different story. On the astrology alone, I'm not seeing it. Now when Jupiter shifts into Aries in the second house from May to November, the possibility of you stacking some cash is very real. But again, I don't know that it's necessarily just going to fall from the heavens, right? It might be because of what you, the direction you take with that north node. You decide that you're going to shift your focus and your intention in a different way. And you're going to stop giving your money away to people just because they say, oh, gee, I think you should pay me another $250 a month. You're going to be like, no, nah, I think I'm keeping that. How about, how about you put that in your pocket and lock it, right? <laughs> um. I want to get some advice, though, about this time frame, May of November, May to November. Uh, don't spend all the money that comes your way. Uh, might be coming easy around that time. Um, don't eat your seeds. Um, life isn't always like this, right? Some of you know from the last few years, it's not always this easy. There's times and seasons, right? So use um, this these opportunities that come your way to uh, multiply your resources, and learn how, if you don't already know, learn how to make your money work for you rather than you working for it. That didn't want to go down, King of Swords. Well, some of you already know what you need to do, okay? It might involve an, Aries, an Aquarius, Libra, or a Gemini, but this is a very, like, logical, head-based decision of, I know what I need to do to cut through whatever difficulties there have been. So I really think this is about you. Do you know what you need to do to level up? I mean, all feelings aside, do you know what you need to do to level up? And you just doing it. You making knowledge-based decisions of, which can sometimes be hard for us. We get in our feels, right? I mean, I'm not throwing any shade. This is Moon and Pisces talking here. Get in our feels and, you know, we're hurt because that wasn't what we wanted or, you know, wasn't what we felt like doing, but we know it's the right thing to do. And so this is a year where if the money's coming in, um, do what you know is the right thing to do, to level up, to make the boss moves so that your money's working for you and you're not working for it. Now the challenges this year for you have to do with Saturn in the 11th and 12th houses. I think initially these challenges in the 11th house will have to do with groups, like friend groups, um, it could be networking, you know, professional networking groups, some of you, um, social media, others of you, um, it has to do with soulmates, ideals, aspirations, okay, there's some kind of challenge 
limitation or restriction having to do with that. And then from the end of April to mid-July, when Saturn goes into that 12th house, there is some need here to be cautious about hidden enemies, self-sabotage. There might be some karmic lesson having to do with that. The positive of this is that it will give you an opportunity to resolve any kind of outstanding health issues, particularly if you've been going through some chronic illnesses. Um, you know, these recurring issues. Um, this would be a good time, end of April to mid-July, a uh, good time for you to practice some self-care proactively. I don't know why these cards have not been coming out. Um, it's like, what's going on here, Pisces? I am going to do something I haven't done for the others. And I'm going to do a five card draw. So some of you, there has been some creative block and I'm seeing in the past, you were working with people, but in the future, it's like you get some kind of idea about how to get the victory. But I see that there's, you've been dealing with some kind of resistance, okay? Um, I don't know if it's a resistance with people that you're networking with or this year I'm seeing again with Saturn going into that 11th house. Maybe in the past, you were able to work with those people, but not anymore. Um, there's some kind of resistance to you working with these people that maybe you did find working with in the past. Some of you, you had trouble working with them in the past. Others of you, you didn't, but you are now. Okay, there's some kind of creative block. Um, and I think that from this blockage, you get a new idea, and that new idea gives you um, a sense of victory. King of Wands. This might have to do with a business. It might have to do with an uh, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. I'm seeing the outcome here as another fire sign as well. Um, but for some of you, this is moving, okay? Um, let me say, you know, because I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but on the moving front, like if you were to move... It would likely happen August 20th to the end of the year, but really August 20th to October 30th is a really prime time for any moves to be made if you're moving house, okay? But really any time between August 20th and the end of the year. And it's pretty unlikely that you would transfer a job. Um, it's probably that whatever you're doing for a living, you're you're settled in what you're doing for a living, and you're not you're you're not seeking a transfer, a job transfer. But if you do seek one, you will probably get it pretty easily. I'm seeing a real quick move here. Okay. Obviously, you got to pay attention to your rising sign because those dates that I gave you are for Pisces rising. Um. I just feel like maybe people that you've worked with in the past. Um, or maybe where you're at, your location, there's some kind of blockage there. But you are going to get a new idea that is going to give you uh, some victory. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can clarify. And clarify with Lenormand. And there's this new idea that's going to get the victory. Ooh. Well, it's a brand new beginning. You tell me more about this brand new beginning. Might have to do with a child. I'm also getting a springtime um, in the spring. This has to do with the direction that you're headed in, choices that you're making, anything more. This is something that you've wanted for a very long time and you've had to wish. You, you've been wishing for it, but it's like something that you had to work hard to bring this wish to pass. Something uh, where you didn't get, you were not getting forward movement. And this has been for a long time, a long, long time. Obviously, that's going to be different for different people. Um, some of you know, you know what I'm talking about. Others of you, this is about, you know, if you, especially if you're running your own business, your own little side hustle, that's what that's about. You're going to try to get some forward movement in that respect. But let's get on uh, to love and relationships. And I want to say also... It might be that some of you, you've, you have maybe neglected your health, okay? And this is a year when you can maybe, if you're able to get some financial relief this year, 
you are going to finally be able to take better care of your health and not neglect it. Because I did want to say that that could prove quite detrimental if you don't practice self-care proactively. That, that could prove detrimental. We'll talk more about that in the health and healing. But let's get on to love and relationships. And let's start off talking about the Venus uh, retrograde in Capricorn in January impacting um, your first house. And so this is going to have a lot of people reviewing their relationships, especially with friendships, soulmates. I'm sorry, in the 11th house. <laughs> um, and Mercury retrograde also in January is going to add another layer of energy causing you to reevaluate these relationships. So uh, you might find it harder than usual. There's a King of Wands, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. You may find it harder than usual to connect with or relate to friends, possibly because of their own personal struggles uh, with these energies. So the advice is try not to take it too personal and maybe focus more on yourself this month and that might actually work to your advantage. I've had this energy myself, by the way, or this realization um, where, you know, I would get hurt because I felt like people were not being supportive of me and, uh, and what I realized, you know, is that uh, people, they really couldn't be supportive of me because they were struggling to support themselves. And, and again, because of the economy and things going on in the world right now, I think that's a lot of the case. And I feel like on the love front, I mean, that's more on a relational front, but on the love front, if we're talking about soulmates and maybe, maybe you've got a fire sign that is a soulmate, I think with this Venus retrograde in Capricorn, you're definitely going to be reflecting on um, what you value about this relationship and how it's adding value to your life. Now there's the King of Swords in reverse and the Ten of Swords. So I think there is something uh, quite painful coming to an end. And I don't necessarily want to say it's this relationship. Um, I am seeing two men here, and then I'm seeing two women over there. That's interesting. Yeah, there's two women over there, too. Okay, so two kings, but one's in the reverse. If there has been a third-party situation, any kinds of betrayal, I see that coming to an end. And it looks like... Um, Looks like the King of Swords, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini is coming across very unreasonable. And I want to caution you if you're dealing with a male of that sign, because I'm seeing a very like almost con man, um, mental manipulator type of energy. Uh, and, and for others of you, this is just if you're in a commitment, um, there is, again, something very painful coming to an end. And I'm not going to say it's necessarily a relationship, but there's just a chapter in your, your life together that is unfortunately coming to an end. And I really don't think that there's any way around it. Like maybe you try to wrap your head around this for a while. You try to figure out, is there any way to avoid this ending on this note, this chapter of our lives together? And you just can't think your way out of it. You can't you can't, um, you can't see another perspective, okay? It's an interesting message. It's almost like there is definitely some kind of finality here that is painful. Um, because maybe there's just been multiple losses and it's like, well, here we are. And there's just something is inevitable with this ending. And now I'm seeing a uh, Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, possibly under 30. We've got the death card and temperance. So we might be looking at a Scorpio, Sagittarius, Cancer with a temperance. But regardless of signs, I'm seeing here that, again, both of these cards indicate there's some kind of ending. So I don't, there's like, this could be a separation. This could be time apart where there's abstinence. There needs to be some kind of healing. I do see that there's a possibility for this to, you know, for there to be like a rebirth. Like if, if, if actually there is a breakup in this relationship, I think it is possible that um, 
you know, the two of you will come back together again, okay? But, and, and then there's an opportunity for healing here, but um, this is quite intense here. Some of you need to do a lot of intense healing in a relationship where there's been some divisiveness, some endings have occurred, and it might be over money because somebody is not adding enough or there's not enough money in this relationship or what they're bringing to the table is just not substantial enough. Like, they don't know how to approach the situation. They don't know how to give them a bigger offer. Like, there's something more needs to be given to this, but they don't know how. I'm getting like a shortage of resources here, all right? And it's brought some division in a relationship. And that needs to get healed. So going back to the astrology. If you are single, the retrogrades of this year are going to force you to focus on what you really want and love. And someone from the past might reappear to help you with gaining. And we got a lot of cards on that. They might help you to um, gain some clarity. And it could be that new opportunities in love are most likely to happen in July and August. But as early as March, you might find a love interest in a friend or through a group association or on social media. So I do see with the Ace of Pentacles there is the opportunity to get some new start. And again, if you're moving, I can see maybe a new home here and some, there's a lot of happiness around this. But again, now something is coming to closure, okay? And it's successfully ending. So I feel that earlier in the year, like the third quarter, you've got some cards here indicating ending, an ending is occurring. It is painful. It's um, not, it's not, avo it's not um, avoidable, okay? But it is making way for a new beginning. And I see the new beginning uh, actually occurring maybe in the second quarter of this year. Like, definitely by summertime, um, you're getting closure and a brand new start over here. And you're happy about it. There's King of Chalices, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. It's your energy. And I'm seeing, though, that there is a caution here. Uh, possibly a Leo is involved as well. Caution here about um, some verbal disagreements and boundaries, perhaps, or somebody holding back. And, and I'm also seeing a lot of ego here, okay? Might, might uh, cause some arguments, so be aware of that. Um, but again, I'm seeing both of these cards are by, I'm happy. I've got a new beginning because I got closure and I ended that. I made a good decision to end that on a positive note to make way for a new beginning. Happy, happy, happy. Um, however, there might be some disagreement with a Leo or disagreement about boundaries. And there might be some kind of ego battles going on there as well with that strength card. So if you're a partner, there's probably, let's say, if there's been any kind of heartbreak in a partnership, in a relationship, this is going to be a good year to heal and recover. And I did see that there in the cards with the temperance. If your partner is going through some tough times, you're likely going to be this to them, right? You're going to be that healing vessel. You're going to be giving that spiritual guidance. And overall, I think that the relationship is going to become strengthened. And if the romance has been lost between the two of you, that is probably going to improve. In January and also June through September, this is going to be the best time to find love. Let me say if you're single, best time to find love. January and June through September. But it might require you avoiding these kind of little arguments, okay? Okay. Or aggressiveness, which I can see here, someone being very ballsy with these these disagreements, okay? Because if somebody doesn't get their ego in check verbally, <laughs> a lot of trouble can come up, okay? And it doesn't have to be, it could create a lot of misunderstandings, again, that are unnecessary. So work on the listening skills and the communication skills, Um Right, I love y'all, but sometimes, uh, like, and I've noticed this with the, particularly with the water sign males, there's with the communication, they they will meander, they will you'll get lost in their sauce, and and 
you know, sometimes, yes, that's nice. I can Piscean with you <laughs> uh, with all my Pisces placements. Other times, not so nice because I'm like, whoa, where we come from? Where are we going here, dude? And and then something I realize, um, you know, as as a an air sign here <laughs> is um, clarity is lost and um, making knowledge based decisions is lost, but also um, the listening skills and from what I've heard, you know, if you want to really be a good communicator, the majority of the effort needs to be on being a good listener. Really making sure that you're not just hearing people, but you're listening to them. You um, you understand what it is they're trying to convey. Understanding that sometimes when people say things, it doesn't mean the same as what it would mean if I said it, right? Like if I could really get into that person's head and understand what they're trying to convey to me and don't just assume it, but clarify it verbally, then we can get into agreement and we can avoid these petty arguments and misunderstandings that are just unnecessary. Let me also say for the couples, the retrogrades of this year could put some outstanding disagreements under more of a microscope. And yes, um, there could be conflicts like this as early as January for you with a Venus retrograde where you're reevaluating how this partner and your life together stacks up against your ideals. And these revelations may somehow come through your friends or your social life or your ambitions. And so if you give one another more space through these challenging times, that might help, especially during the retrograde months. If you know, arguments arise. Of course, disagreements need to get talked out, right? And then you probably will have to make some adjustments. That's just how it's going to go. And by July and August, well, the good news is probably uh, less of that mental verbal energy, more fun, more romance for the two of you. So just hang in there for six months of this year. Um, go on, do, do the work you know, to get on the same page together and um, understand one another more deeply. And I think if you do that work by July, August, it's going to lighten up a lot more. Also, um, this is a year where relationships with siblings or neighbors might become more difficult, um, particularly late July, early August, with a conjunction of Mars, Uranus, and the North Node impacting your third house. I mean, look, this is all affecting us collectively, but you specifically in that third house. So if there have been any difficulties um, with, you know, siblings, neighbors, uh, then, you know, and I'm saying over the last three cu couple years, okay, last few years, um, well, this is going to be temporary. That's the good news. But it's the good listening skills and patience that are probably going to help get you through that difficult time. And again, it is probably their issue, not yours. Um, because, like I said from the beginning of this reading, as a mutable sign, y'all are having an easier time. It's the fixed signs you got to watch out for. Leo, which I see here. Scorpio might be right over there. Um, Aquarius, well, I saw the Aquarian over in the main reading, right? And a Taurus. I'll see a Taurus here. Well, I did see a Page of Pentacles. Could be but yeah those those are the ones having a rough time of it okay now october through let me just say in october saturn uh and uranus are going to square and that's going to impact your third and 11th houses respectively so this could have you revisiting troubles from last year um again another collective energy but the houses it's hitting are specific to you um and it's getting it's asking you to get closure on some unfinished business having to do with friend groups, your social life, maybe even social media. And I do see the closure here on the table. So let's see. Knight of Wands again. My gosh, some of you are moving. This is confirmation. That's a synchronicity. We have that Knight of Wands come up in the um, main spread. And it can definitely indicate moving house for some of you. And I saw maybe a new home as early as spring. Um, but if, you know, if we take all that out of here, cause we'll see if that comes out again in the career and money reading. But if, if we take that out of here, if, if I, if I just read it 
as purely relational. I do feel that either you're going to get a new relationship that comes in rather quickly, or you're going to reach a new level of commitment in your relationship, which is going to, again, come in quite... And it's because you're having to end an old way of being in this relationship. And you're laying a foundation for this new chapter in your lives together. But there, I see a sudden shift here with this at the, the foundation. So let's get on to your money reading, career and money. And at the start of the year, you could be quite ambitious setting your goals, and I hope you are. I encourage you to do that at the beginning of the, this video. Um, you possibly more ambitious than previous years. Absolutely go for it. I mean, I have. I've, I mean, I've already got my, you know, <laughs> I already bought my little, I do this every year. You know, I bought my day planner, and I've already been filling it in, you know, with the astrology and my plans and my goals, and I've got a dry erase board. Oh, yeah, I'm in it. I am deep into it, okay? Look at that Ace of Pentacles yet again. You had that in the love reading. Oh, man. Oh, it's over here. Um, hey, that's a synchronicity. Okay, some of you, you're getting a new home. Um a new beginning in a relationship. This is a really solid new start, okay? Um, but again, with this goal setting, um, you have a lot of astrological support with the changes you're trying to make this year, and that's a welcome relief, particularly if you look back at the last three and a half years. If, if the, During that time frame, it's been kind of slow and rough uh, with your career. At this point, you're craving a long overdue success, okay? Even if it takes you out of your comfort zone, again, if you got to move to get leverage with your business to bring the cost of living down or the cost of overhead down, um, that's what you're going to do. And uh, whatever hard work you commit yourself to this year and the sacrifices you make are all adding to your success. Eight of Chalices, some of you, yes, are leaving something behind with this new beginning. I mean, whatever this is, that you're starting. It is involving you walking away from something that made you happy. And you know, honestly, I kind of saw that in the reading and with the love reading that some of you, you know, it's painful, but actually getting the ending, you're going to heal from it and you're going to go towards something that you're going to close that thing out and you're going to have a new beginning that is going to make you quite happy is what I saw in the love reading. So, um, it's almost like something has to be left behind. Something has to be sacrificed in order for you to get this new start is what I'm seeing. In January, like I said, good for goal setting and improving um, your business with some strategies, some very thoughtful strategies, right? Very uh, well thought out. Um, some of you might be getting some kind of promotion or you're promoting, if you're a business owner, you're promoting your business more. You're doing more promotional work. The most profitable months for you are likely going to be March through September because it's during this time that you're probably going to see more career growth, more pay increases. And so some of you might buy a new home or a new car during this time. That, I mean, usually I would associate a new car with a chariot, and I don't believe we didn't get the chariot. We'll see if it comes out. Uh, some of you, I, and again, you pair that with the two Knight of Wands. I'm really leaning towards movement here. You're going to get new housing. Um, probably by, well, I'd say March through September, okay? And then by October, November, things are going to settle down. Things are going to calm down for you. Now, mid-April, um, it could be a time where if you have made investments, they're probably going to start paying off. Um, whatever you investments you made prior to mid-April um, could be easily sold off now for profit and profiting you generously. Yeah, I see you manifesting something, okay? And I see you being resourceful. And uh, I'm seeing that whoever you're joining forces with, whether it is a spouse, a partner, a life partner, a business partner, family, I just see everybody's pulling their resources together to make manifest something that is going to lead you toward nine of chalices, um, which is, you know, very happy, very happy. Okay, so I'm getting several want to peek, peek out. Um, 
Ace of Chalice is in reverse. There might be some kind of emotional blockage here or a creative block. And I kind of saw that before. Actually, let me move this over here. A lot of cards. There's that strength card again. Leo might be relevant here. I am also seeing an air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, possibly, regardless of sign. It, it seems like somebody is trying to take decisive action on an issue where they have maybe had a creative block. There, there might have been some kind of emotional block there too with that, that ace of chalices, like something was unhealed, okay? Something was not able to fully express itself and somebody's trying to cut that out. And again, I think this is coming from a point of knowledge of, you know what, I know what I need to do here to get the victory and I'm going in to cut this out. And it might have to do with a Leo, might have to do with um, boundaries or exercising some kind of restraint also, I'm seeing um, restraint uh, surrounding use of resources, money. I do want to caution this is somewhat of a really kind of darker shadow energy of somebody being so self-protective that it's just super guarded and unhealthy. I, I don't know why I'm hearing intuitively they're afraid of more losses. Um, this could be really controlling behavior with money, very materialistic, very possessive, somebody who's like a hoarder or, you know, very stingy. This might have been someone who um, has dealt with bankruptcy or they, they feel, they sense within themselves that they don't have enough or afraid that they're not going to have enough. And that's why they're, they're, they're doing that, that why they're tight fisted like that. But I feel with the Ten of Swords in reverse, really positive omen here saying, you're coming out of this, okay? You're going to heal from this. And whatever whatever this negativity was, where did I see that Ten of Swords was, it came out before. So it might be somebody that you're partnered with and love, all right? Yeah. But it's this is you healing again. Didn't that come out before? Isn't that a synchronicity? Yeah, there it was. Ten of Swords there. Um, but again, I saw surrounding that Ten of Swords that you know there would be some some healing of that situation okay and there it is you're healing and i feel what needs to be healed is some grief maybe over um some kind of regret okay that well i i wasn't able to get things to flourish in the way that i had hoped um i had to shut that chapter of my life to get a new beginning and it might have to do with family for some of you. It might have to do with the breakup of a family. Um, for others of you, this is old wounds going back a long time or they built up a, a long, over a long time. And I got that with the clarifiers. Some of you for a long time, you've not been able to get forward movement in your life in the way that you wanted. And you worked really hard for it. You worked really hard to bring those wishes to pass but now you're brought up with a choice like, look, do you want to keep digging in that well or you want to go through a different door, okay, and get a new start, a new direction, a new choice so that you can finally put this like that and get the forward movement in your life instead of hoping, wish, and praying for eons, it feels, um, to make that happen. I'm going to say, you know... Um, you know, with my Pisces placements and the way that this is hitting my daughter as well as Pisces' son, um, you know, it's the town that she's getting pushed out of financially, you know, financially is um, the same town I got pushed out of in 2017. And the economic pressure there, the economic warfare is so much, and we love that town. We love that town. I'm so nostalgic about it, you know. Uh, I so wanted to make it work, but, I mean, there are forces out of our control. I don't see Wheel of Fortune in reverse here indicating that for you. But again, it's like in some way, does our, my story that I'm sharing with you and hers, does this, is this relatable to you? Are you dealing with, you wanted to accomplish something, you had it in your mind, it was going to go down a certain way and sadly it didn't. Um, you're realizing that in order to empower yourself more financially, you're going to have to come at this from a different angle. It's bittersweet. This is what I'm hearing. Bittersweet. 
Um, I will say also May through October, when Jupiter is in Aries, you got a lot of great financial opportunities coming your way because of Jupiter going in that second house, as I mentioned before, and it's during this time that you're probably going to see an increase in income. Just be careful, like I said, not to spend all the money as soon as it comes in because it can make you, the energy can make you so optimistic about your financial future that you may start to think it's always going to be this easy, but you know it's not. Come on now. <laughs> Remember the last few years. Be careful, okay? Um, there's that fire sun again, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Um, but it might have to do with business, okay? It might have to do with uh, working in the industries of the media, uh, marketing, entrepreneurship, business leadership, but I see something is going back and forth here again, maybe between locations, trying to uh, balance things out, adapt to changes in your life financially, juggle resources. I do see, you know, even if this is not a boss or a fire sign, this is an energy of somebody who's really like getting, I think, agitated about it, getting irritated about the juggling act. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, I, I, unless it's this Leo here again that is like, I'm really getting fed up with this. Some of you, when I tell you you're going to have an increase in income and it might be that you do something clever to think outside of the box and you're like, well, you know, right, if that opportunity doesn't come in or um, that raise doesn't come in, then you come up with some way, like I said, to... Um, pivot out of maybe a financially exploitive situation so that your money gets stretched farther every month. You're able to do more with your money. You invest it in ways where you multiply the money, okay? One way or another, y'all are all different, right? But one way or another, this Jupiter in Pisces and Jupiter in Aries uh, this year, you're gonna find a way to prosper, okay? Take that, all right? Take that what I'm saying. That is a blessing to you. Now, we'll say that um, I, I do want to advise you, January through May, that if you have any disposable income, please reserve it uh, for investments. Because it's quite possible that by May, when Jupiter goes into that second house, you're going to have some financial gain from it. And if you don't have investments at this time, it might come through sale of property or, again, a job opportunity. I'm going to tell you, like, I'm going to put out a video on crypto God willing, pretty soon in January, and I'm going to talk to you all about it, but there's a lot of money to be made in, in crypto. My daughter, who is an artist, is getting into NFTs because there's money in that, which is tied into crypto, okay? She's learning about it. So for some of you, um, and I'm going to talk about this Pluto return that's happening in February, which is going to impact all of us. It's, it's hitting the second house um, for the United States natal chart, okay? And so I do believe that February could be a month where you find some discount prices on crypto. Now, everybody's going to be saying different. You know how you know how the mainstream media is. They're going to be like, oh my gosh, look at that. Stay away from crypto. It's volatile. It's so risky. Oh, no, uh-uh. Ignore, ignore. Come on, Pisces. Swim against the current, <laughs> right? Go get that because that's the future, and what you do is you buy low, you sell high. And I can see a buy low opportunity in February and a sell high opportunity by as early as May for you. Definitely August, okay? Well, not financial advice, right? You, you have to use your own discernment, okay? I'll talk more in future videos about it. I will see though, say that if you are trying to seek a new business opportunity, probably the best time for that or getting a promotion or some kind of raise or recognition would be June and August. In June, um, you might receive some kind of inheritance or shared resources. It might be property. It might be through family or spouse, okay? But again, look, I mean, I want to go back to this. It looks like you're going, this is just kind of another synchronicity here, right? We had, we had a, uh, some cards indicating... A move and now here I'm seeing two locations between two locations nine of Pentacles whatever location you are or whatever change you're going through okay whatever adaptation or option you're weighing out um, it is 
I think the advice here is you need to, you need to pick the option that is going to give you the greatest amount of self-sufficiency. Nine of Pentacles is about having more than enough to give to yourself and to others. And definitely with that Queen of Pentacles there, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, this is about you taking a very practical, down-to-earth approach. And with the Three of Pentacles, it might be that you start collaborating or cooperating with an Earth sign or some type of energy that is like... Um, it might be a, a, a woman, okay, because I'm seeing very feminine energy with both of these cards. You're collaborating with somebody who is, again, I'm getting a, a synchronicity here, coming together, being resourceful, pulling resources, pulling, um, even if it's just skills, okay, or uh, networking contacts, something. People are pulling out all the stuff, all the strings to uh, cooperate with you to get you where you want to go. And where you want to go is towards the self-sufficiency that is going to happen through being very down-to-earth and practical is what I'm seeing there. So like I said before, if you're moving this year, it's likely going to happen August 20th to the end of the year. But really, honestly, it's mostly highlighted August 20th through the 30th. The cards, though, were indicating, and, and this might be for more, more of you who are like... Um, Pisces sun, okay? I, the, for me, the cards are telling me that in spring, as early as like March, April, that move could happen. Now, late July, early August, we got a big astrological event going on that's impacting everybody. It's the uh, Mars, Uranus, and North Node conjunction for you. It is ha affecting your third house. So try to be careful with communication issues, as I mentioned before, particularly if you work in the media or you do a lot of social media outreach work. Um, or you do any teaching because this could be a lot of drama going on out there in the world. But the good listening skills will serve you well. Just be aware, you know, there's a caution against running your mouth, even if it's just harmless meandering. Um, and saying things that don't ultimately serve you or others very well. Um, oh, well. So... Um, there could be some kind of a mother figure. Again, I'm seeing a feminine energy, family related. For some of you, it's career with the Ten of Pentacles. Might have to do with an inheritance, generational wealth, shared resources. I feel like overall the family is fine, but it looks like this feminine energy is not. There's something upside down uh, with her. Um, or there's some kind of maybe lack of growth with the generational wealth or with a career, or at least it appears that way. And there is Ten of Swords yet again. I'm sorry, Ten of Wands yet again in reverse. Just the way I like it. Because that's in the upright, not a great card. It's talking about you took on too much responsibility. But with it in reverse, you dropped that load. Okay? If you come into this year where you're like, I cannot do all of this. I don't have enough resources to support this. I don't know how I'm going to make this happen. I'm not getting the opportunities or the create, I've got to create a block or I don't have people working with me like they used to. Um, you're dropping this heavy burden. You're done with it. No more. Okay. Um, and again, I am seeing with the three of pentacles, the magician and the 10 of pentacles, I feel like you're going to be able to amass opportunities for yourself through other people, whether it be family members or um, people that you are networking with online, social media. Uh, again, it might be a shift, okay? I do see because of Saturn going through that 11th house, I, I think there might be a bit of a shift. Uh, maybe the people that you, you were collaborating with in the past are not the people that you were going to collaborate with in the future, in this year, okay? Nevertheless, you got a lot of resourcefulness out on the table here. Just watch out for this feminine energy, because I, I see that something's not quite right. And it might be domestic disharmony. Um, but again, I'm getting the vibe that this is not... I don't really know that this is under your roof. I, this might be with extended family. I'm sorry to say. But somebody is probably, in, you know, in response to this situation. Um, they're probably not going to take on any more responsibilities. Um, and... Um, they might be burned out. They might take a time out. That's another thing that might happen. So uh, let me see if I can get you some financial advice for the year. 
visualize abundance in all forms. That one wanted to come out. We have no problem doing that, right? I mean, we know how to Neptune out. We absolutely, I can Neptune out like the best of them. In fact, that was my gift curse for most of my life, Neptuning out, like, you know, not dealing with reality. <laughs> uh, <laughs> other people need drugs. Pisces has Neptune. <laughs> okay, what is the financial advice for Pisces? That is a financial advice. I'm feeling this one here. Quiet retreat. God is your source. So it says, it's time for you to disconnect from the outer world so that you can discern and process your true thoughts and feelings from your inner world. Create this quiet time for yourself and you'll have more clarity about what to do next. Um, I do feel intuitively that this has to do with Saturn going into your 12th house, April, mid-July-ish, where I think you're going to be plugging more into source. And honestly, now I'm being brought to, I'm being corrected. No, this is year long. Okay. Um, because of, it starts this year off this way because of um, Jupiter and Pisces, because, you know, even Aries and Pisces is, um, I'm sorry, Jupiter and Aries rather, um, in your second house is back to you still and your value, your sense of self-worth. And so I really see that this is a year where you're going to be more spiritually plugged in. And I feel that if you haven't been clear about what you need to do about the situations that are concerning you, you're going to get that clarity through prayer and meditation. I don't know necessarily though, right? With this, I'm getting a very disconnected vibe and it's bringing me back to the, um, the cards having to do with endings in your life, closing chapters in your life to make way for something new. I get the feeling that, um, you know, it, it might get lonely for a time there because you might start feeling like um, your support system, what used to be your support system, is disintegrating or diminishing in some respect. But um, another one is being formed. And in that downtime, you've got spirit. And boy, do you have spirit. I mean, I'd say on any given year, Pisces has spirit, okay? But definitely this year, which is being called the year of Pisces. Definitely with Jupiter and Pisces. Absolutely. So tap into those resources. Tap into those reserves. I mean, source is the source of your abundance. Whether we're talking about uh, money, material, love, relationships, connections, you know, um, health, everything. And let me talk to you about health, by the way. That's a good segue into us talking about what's going on with your health this year. The first five months, again, blessing to you, feeling renewed in your confidence and faith with Jupiter in your sign. And during this time, the sun in Pisces on February 18th is adding just another layer of energetic boost to your overall sense of well-being and vitality. And then you follow that up with a new moon in Pisces on March 2nd. Well, I mean, it's just adding a greater sense of emotional encouragement and security. The only exception is that in March... Mars will be in your 12th house, Uranus in your third house, and they're squaring. So that could create some anxiety. And if so, you might need to do some kind of spiritual detox. And I mentioned that very early on in this video, um, that you've got to address whatever it is from your past that's been haunting you. Emotions might rise to the surface during this time. And if they are, just really acknowledge them. Be aware of them. How is it that they're asking you to assert your emotional needs more, more than you have before? If there have been issues in your life with a sense of powerlessness, a feeling of being victimized, now is the time to take your power back from others and release whatever has been holding you back from living a full life. Now, by April, Venus is going to join Jupiter in Pisces. It's going conjunct in your first house, so... Um, this is bringing you once in a lifetime blessings. So things will start to work out for you, especially if March was difficult. And I do see from May through October, it's mostly positive when perhaps you're going to seek some kind of relief 
from pressures on the home front and with family. Remember, I saw that in the financial reading. I told you this is about family, okay? Maybe a mother figure. You might be the mother figure. I mean, if I took this reading for myself, I'd be like, yeah, I could see that being me. Um, just be aware of that time, um, that it is going to be probably the most challenging. Um, you might irritate yourself, others. You might become a lazy homebody, um, totally demotivated. Um, again, because I saw with that, that um, 10 of wands in reverse, you might be burned out around that time frame. Okay. Um, you might be like, yeah, I'm toast. I'm done. I've been through, you know, making a lot of, a lot of things happen this year. And by the end of this year, you know, May through October, you're just like, I'm burned out. I'm burned out. So good time again for sleep meditation, um, as a good coping mechanism, if all else fails. And then by December, when Jupiter goes back into your first house in Pisces, it's going to help you with easing any pressures and bring in even more blessings. Similar to what you experienced the first five months of this year. So let's see what the cards have to say about Pisces. What needs to be healed for Pisces this year? And I'm feeling this one. And that. Wow, that is like, okay. So ordinarily, I wouldn't be fond of this. Um, this is about decrease, decline, cutting back, frugality, contraction, letting go, less is more, resourcefulness, a sacrifice. And it almost seems kind of like um, a contradiction to what I've been saying all along with Jupiter in your sign that, um, oh, you're going to get all these blessings. Um, let's not read too much into this, right? Um, right, because a lot of times when you hear that, you might hear, oh, cool, I'm going to win the lottery. Oh, no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> so our idea of increase is maybe not a spirit's idea of increase. And I feel that in this case, um, you're getting increase. Um, you're taking a bite out of this because I think you've been dealing with this energy. Actually, you come into the, like this year having suffered, sadly, I'm sorry to say the last maybe three and a half years uh, of dealing with this energy. OK, and you're biting through it this year. You're taking decisive action. You're restoring order. You're applying force with sensitivity, justice, tenacious devotion to this task at hand. I even see that dragon going towards this issue like I'm putting a stop to this. Um, if you are if you are living someplace that is stealing from you, robbing from you, your earnings, they are taking from you more than what is fair and just. I see you cutting through this and cutting them out and saying, no, you cannot have this. I will leave this dwelling. You are not going to charge me exorbitant rent. Okay? Um Others of you, it might be if you're working um, at a place where they haven't been giving you raises, there, the wage increases or pay raises have not been keeping up with inflation. This is a time when you go in and you say, you know what? Cost of living has increased. And uh, what are you guys doing to keep my talent here? And this is a year when you would actually probably pull it off. This is about you being resourceful. I don't really necessarily know that this is going to be a come the increase this year is going to come through an easy break and it goes back to this with the clarifying cards you've been working really hard at this this is not an easy break this is you got to dig for that water you gotta you gotta really go deep to get that water okay but there is water there in that well and you're going to get down to the bottom of it and you're going to get your water you're going to get replenished it's going to happen the sun's going to come out again you will get forward movement finally okay but again, what you have to do to bite through this, this difficult time is maybe take some actions that you didn't want to take, right? You didn't want to get your teeth out on this, did you, Pisces? I know you didn't. You know, y'all, some of y'all want to be nice little jellyfish. You don't want to be piranhas, but I think, or sharks, I think the shark teeth might come out this year. <laughs> okay, because I think you done had it with this. And uh, I can attest to it right here with all my Pisces placements. So good for you. Uh, you are going to turn these things around and I am absolutely bravo backing you, wishing you all the best. Y'all have a wonderful 2022. Be blessed.